Hi, welcome back to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith, and in this video, we're going to learn Operation Swift Scouts for Mechs vs. Minions, which is designed and published by Riot Games. This scenario is meant to be played after you finish Mission 1 Short Fuse, and we have a video for that as well, which I'll put in the description below. For now, though, things have gone from bad to worse. The school is on fire. Thankfully, the Dean has a solution. You. <laughs> of course, he wants you to go out and handle this problem, so let's go to the table and see what we have to do. This scenario is found in the Operation Swift Scouts dossier, and inside you'll find not only the new rules that we're going to be learning, but also new cards that we'll be adding to the game in just a moment. Now that we've set up a few scenarios already, we can do this much quicker. First, lay out the map tiles as shown, placing the school here. And then on each of these repair pads, place a crystal shard along with the crystal compass nearby oriented in this direction. And of course we also have the command and damage decks, the timer, and the dice. Also place minions just as you see here on screen. As you can tell, we have several advancing on our already damaged school. The players then place their mechs on any spaces of the school facing in any direction. On the Doom Tracker, set the school's health to 1 unless you want to play an easier game, in which case you can set it to three. Opening the packet included in this envelope will find new schematics, which you should give to the players based on their chosen yordles, returning the rest to the box. And yes, this means that now each player has two schematics that they can unlock over the course of the game. In that packet, there was also a new damage card, and this should be shuffled into the damage deck. And that's the setup. In Operation Swift Scouts, Hordes of minions are spawning and marching towards the school, which remember, is currently on fire. So if it takes even just one point of damage, it's going to collapse and you lose. What you and the other mechs have to do is go around and collect each of the crystal shards and bring them back to the school where they can be assembled to power an inhibitor which will stop all these minions from spawning. So let's go back to the table and learn the new rules for this scenario. From now on, your mechs no longer destroy crystals with their attacks or if they land on them. Instead, if you enter a space with a crystal, you pick it up and carry it with you when you move. So you can place it by your command line as a reminder. Each mech can only carry one crystal at a time, but as soon as you enter any one of the school spaces with it, the crystal is returned safely and you can return it to the box. Keep in mind, you can enter or exit the school from any one of its outside spaces. If your mech, let's say Corky in this case, is carrying a crystal and takes damage, then roll the rune die and place the crystal in the adjacent space in that direction. If there's a minion there, then place the crystal underneath of them. On the other hand, if the space rolled contains a mech, then they immediately pick the crystal up. If the rolled space is off the board, or not a valid one, then your mech, luckily, picks the crystal back up again. Now let's learn about the changes to the minion phase for this scenario. Using the crystal compass as a reminder, each tile will get a color. Blue, red, green, and yellow, just like we see here. During minion movement, all minions move one space towards the school, like I've just done. Then a player rolls the rune die, and minions on that colored tile move one more space. So in this case, this tile would activate. I've moved the minions, and don't forget, any that enter oil will slide across it. You may also notice that while minions can enter a space with crystal shards, they don't actually pick them up and carry them. The paths the minions follow are pretty straightforward, but you might want to keep the booklet handy as it shows the exact paths they follow once they enter that center tile. Once a minion has reached the center tile, it will only ever move one space at most during minion movement. I should also mention, Anytime you roll red for extra minion movement, instead of minions moving, any mechs on the school board here take one damage. The fire is flaring up. If a minion would ever enter a school space, instead remove it from play and reduce the school's health on the Doom Tracker by one. Which, unless you're playing on easy mode, means you lose. After movement, spawn an entire row of minions on the far side of the tile that was rolled during minion movement. So in our previous examples, we had the minions on the yellow tile move, and so you can see I've spawned a new row of them here. If you would roll red, you get some relief and no minions spawn. During the minion attack step, they do damage as normal to mechs, but not to crystals. They can even enter the same space as a crystal as we saw earlier, and that has no effect. And that's everything you need to know to start playing, except for the escalation rules. The first time a crystal shard is picked up by a mech, during the minion phase, you'll now spawn two full rows of minions in the spawn zone, 
instead of just one. Let's use the yellow tile as an example again. And now you can see we've actually spawned two rows of minions. As soon as any mech first picks up any one of the other two crystal shards, things escalate again. Now, instead of rolling a die for extra minion movement, all minions by default on the outer three tiles automatically move two spaces. Keep in mind, minions still only move one space per round while they're on the center tile. So pretending things started like this, after minion movement, this is how it would look. Keep in mind, you'd still roll a die to see where new minions spawn, so if I roll blue, as you can see, we'd have a lot more minions on the board. Because the first escalation's effect doesn't end either, it continues as well. And finally, as soon as a mech picks up, for the first time, the last remaining crystal, two full rows of minions spawn in each of these three map tiles during the minion spawn step. Obviously, once this happens, you better quickly get back to the school. Now you're ready to tackle the mission. If you get all three crystals back to the school before its health reaches zero, you fix the defenses and save the school from burning down. Then you can read the paragraph here, and when you're ready, find and unseal the Operation Tiny Evil envelope to continue your adventures. In the description of this video, you'll find a link taking you to the one that teaches that next adventure, and if you have any questions about anything that you saw here, don't hesitate to put them in the comments below, and I'll gladly answer them as soon as I get a chance. But until the next episode, thanks for watching.